Hi everyone, welcome to our worship service this day. Um, today we celebrate Maundy Thursday as we work our way towards Easter. I'm Pastor Dee Reese and I'm the senior pastor at St. John Lutheran Church in Romeo, Michigan. On behalf of the congregation and myself, I'd like to welcome you to our worship this day. This season of Lent and into Easter, we have been looking at the parables of Jesus and um, our brokenness and how the parables can speak to us in our brokenness and how indeed Jesus can fix that brokenness and turn us um, anew each day um, into his loved children. So again, I'd like to welcome you to worship. Um, let us begin. In this holy week, the Son of God prepares a great banquet for all people. This banquet features his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. In this banquet, the sacrifice is remembered. In this banquet, the sacrifice is received. In this banquet, we have life. In this banquet, we have salvation. We are invited to the feast. Jesus said, But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. In this banquet we have salvation. We are invited to the feast. Jesus said, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. In this banquet, we have salvation. We are invited to the feast. Jesus said a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Grant me your grace, O God, that my faith in Jesus would be pleasing and acceptable to you. And now I invite you into a time for confession and forgiveness of your sins. In our sin and sinfulness, we make excuses, Lord, squandering and taking for granted the grace of God and the banquet he so freely gives. Most merciful God, we confess that our very nature is sinful we do not love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We do not love our neighbors as ourselves. It is natural for us to make excuses when you present your gifts to us. Because of our selfishness, we deserve to be shut out of the banquet. Though you are generous in your love, we deserve only your wrath. Forgive us, most holy God. On this day, the Lord Jesus institutes a new banquet for you. With his broken body and shed blood, he creates a meal that fills you with forgiveness, love, and life. Jesus honors you at the banquet. Because of his perfect sacrifice, all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The first reading for this Monday Thursday comes from the 25th chapter of Isaiah verses 6 through 9. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken it will be said on that day lo this is our God we have waited for him so that he might save us this is the Lord for whom we have waited let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation the word of the Lord thanks be to God our second reading comes from 1st Corinthians 11th chapter verses 23 through 32. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, 
This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was a servant of all your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to the 22nd chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the 14th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. And when the hour came, he reclined at a table and the apostles with him. And Jesus said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Their huge table had been in the family for four generations. They had seven, seven children in their family, at least for now. Two were theirs biologically. The other five came from five different nations, and each had special needs. Being at dinner with them was like being in heaven. The disabilities among the kids disappeared in their sheer love around the table as they gathered. When asked how they had decided to grow their family this way and to this size, the mom said simply, there just always seemed to be room for one more, and I think there still is. 
the church has grown in similar um, attitude from its beginning. There always seemed to be room for one more. It's the same attitude we bring to the Lord's table. We come to the feast on his presence and his forgiveness, but we also come knowing that his embrace is large and that this table asks for more. We'll pick this thought up at the close of the sermon. Jesus actually tells this parable at a banquet hosted by a leading Pharisee on the Sabbath. Despite the eyes inspecting Jesus' every move, he boldly heals a man sick with dropsy, defending his action driven by love and making no apology for his work on the Sabbath. Then he comments on the guests seeking the high places at the feast, suggesting they would be wise to take the lowest place instead as an act of humility. And if this is not enough, Jesus suggests that the banquet host would be more blessed to have invited people who cannot repay him with a similar banquet. People like the poor, like the disabled. And if the Pharisees thought that Jesus would shrink in their ultra-righteous presence, the Pharisees were mistaken. Perhaps trying to salvage the event, one of the reclining guests says, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. The man's blessing tapped into the expectation of a great banquet on the arrival of the Messiah. Isaiah foretold the feast in the new Jerusalem on Mount Zion. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, which comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6. That blessing provides the cue for Jesus' parable. Jesus tells the story of a man who sends advance invitations to many to come to his banquet. When the banquet is ready, though, and the second invitation goes out, his invited guests begin offering a variety of very lame excuses as to why they could not attend. Realizing he is left with many empty places, he sends a servant out to do exactly what Jesus said his host should do. He tells them to go out quickly to invite the poor and the disabled of the city to this table. Many respond to the invitation and come but yet there's still room. So once again, the host sends out his servant, this time to the boondocks outside the city limits, hoping for a full house. And as for those who insulted the host in excusing themselves, they would miss the banquet by their own choice and to their own loss. With this parable, Jesus was saying that the messianic kingdom had arrived. The feast had begun. Israel and its leaders were given advance notice but now, as the feast was beginning, they refused to come. So now the very people the Pharisees saw as unclean were being welcomed into the kingdom. The people Jesus loves, the sick, the sinners, the outcasts. Not only were they joining in the feast, but the invitation would be extended to the Gentiles too, those outside the chosen nation of Israel. And as for the Pharisees who rejected Jesus and his invitation, they had excluded themselves from this feast. On this day, we recall how Jesus, the night he was betrayed, gave us his supper as a fulfillment of the Passover and a foretaste of the great heavenly feast to come. Past, present, and future come together in this meal. We remember Jesus' death. We receive Jesus' very presence. We look forward to the heavenly banquet. There is more, though. As we gather, there is still time and there is still room for more to join us. That's why this table continues to be a place of invitation. There's a longing in our host and in us for more to join us. They will lean on his grace and grow as disciples. They will be sinners like us, wounded, sick, recovering, and disabled. They will come, and we will rejoice. We must never, ever forget them, the ones who are not here yet. We have the privilege of inviting them to this banquet and to the ones still to come. The table is huge. There just always seems to be for one more. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join with me in prayers of intercession. Um, as each petition ends, 
with Master of the Feast, I invite you to respond with the words, feed us with your love and forgiveness. Let us pray. God who welcomes us to the banquet, forgive us for the times we make excuses and deny the invitation to be in your presence. When you present a banquet filled with your gifts, make us ever thankful to receive them and give us the resolve to welcome others and give them the places of honor. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. God who welcomes us to the banquet, we pray for the leaders of the nations that they would provide justice and peace so that all people would be well fed and welcomed at tables where there is plenty. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. God, who welcomes us to the banquet, your church is the place of the banquet that leads to eternal life. Through your word and sacraments, enliven your people to be a welcoming people, providing places of honor for those who most need it. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. God, who welcomes us to the banquet, there are many whose needs require your healing hand. We ask at this time that you could Send your healing presence and your healing grace to those who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those in our world who are suffering, Lord, as they treat those who are suffering from that virus, Lord, and just for our whole entire world during this pandemic. We ask that you can be with those who are listed on our St. John's uh, prayer list and for those who we name aloud or in our hearts at this time. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. God who welcomes us to the banquet, we long for the time when we can come together and actually enjoy that banquet, your body and blood of Holy Communion that we celebrate and worship since we are not able to do that as a gathered people at this time in our sanctuary or wherever we are, we ask that you can lead us into the future, that when we do come together, that you can supply all that we need to support our body and life. And we ask that you would grant your healing to those who are suffering from illness, disease, pain, or loss. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. God, who welcomes us to the banquet, we remember before you all those who have gone before us and are now feasting at your heavenly banqueting table. Be with those families who are suffering the loss of loved ones at this time. Help us so to follow after all of the people in the faith who have taught us well, that we too could enjoy the feast that is to come. Master of the feast, feed us with your love and forgiveness. And Lord, at this time, we commend all for whom we pray and giving you thanks for the prayer that you teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The God who prepares for you the banquet that leads to eternal life, strengthen you in your faith, and grant you the forgiveness of sins as you are seated in the place of honor at Jesus' special invitation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may we all go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.